Hello, women. How are you doing today? I want to really talk to you today about a recipe for love. Recipe for love. You know, so many times we talk about again, I love this person. I love this person. I love this person. But, you know, I find out so many times that we really don't know what love is. See, we see and take love is uh, just an emotion. I feel, I feel, it's a feeling, it's a feeling, but it's more than a feeling. And anytime we end up getting involved in a love relationship and staying there just because of feelings, then we really do have to check ourselves uh, because, you know, feelings change. We can't trust our feelings. You know, feelings change from day to day. You know, there's a recipe for, for love. It's just like making a cake or anything else. I mean, you have to put certain ingredients in a chocolate cake to get a chocolate cake. Or, for that matter, a coconut cake. Everything has a recipe. Well, love has a recipe, too. And there are some primary ingredients that must be a part of a love relationship. Now, I want to tell you, a few of them, not all of them today uh, in this particular session, but I do want to mention some important ones. Uh, first of all, uh, if you love someone, then you need to be looking and trying to get these ingredients for your love relationship. And the love relationship, first of all, ought to be about integrity and honesty, okay? Now, how can you say you love someone or they say they love you and you're not an honest person? Uh, you don't keep your word or uh, your word is not the truth. And if you were to check some things out about the person, you would find out again, well, oh my gosh, they lied to me. This is not true. They said this, they said this, they said this. I caught him in a lie here, I caught him in a lie there, I caught him in a lie here, I caught him in a lie there. Oh, it's all right, because I love them, and they love me, and they tell me they love me. No, honesty must be in a love relationship in order for it to be stable and to be solid. Solid. And then there's uh, another ingredient that you got to have, this communication. Can you imagine somebody sitting back? <laughs> and don't want to talk, don't want to say anything, and you're doing all the talking, and they're just sitting back looking. You know, they might shake their head every now and then, or what have you, but, and then when they communicate, it's not healthy communication. It's either a loud, a boisterous, or arguments, or a disrespect, and calling you out of your name, and the other person calling the other person out of the name. There must be a good communication and both people must be willing to say what they're thinking and also express what they're feeling thoughts and feelings you have to express that and I also mentioned this other ingredient the third one which is respect you got to communicate in respect but you also have to show respect to the other person respect which means again showing high regard for the other person, you know, uh, making sure again that you uh, don't come against them or across them in any negative or bad way uh, that would not show them in a good light. We can talk to people in a disrespectful way by calling them out of their name or all the profanity we might be using when we talk to the other person. Uh, we can uh, disrespect the person by what we do. Oh, yeah, what we do, uh, you know, and the highest form of uh, disrespect is adultery, you know, or again, just, uh, you know, creeping around on the person that you are with. That's disrespectful. You know, you, you have to ask yourself, would you want that done to you? You know, so respect demands respect. And somebody asked again, well, uh, shouldn't respect be earned? Yeah, it, it should be earned. I mean, it has to be earned, but uh, I still will show respect whether somebody disrespects me or not. 
I'm not going to disrespect another person. And, and yes, the earning part just means that if you have been disrespectful, uh, then again, you have to earn that respect uh, back again by showing that there is a change. You know, there must be a change in, in order to uh, earn respect from a disrespectful person who constantly continues to disrespect. So I've said three major things, you know. I think honesty, integrity, you know, they go hand in hand. Uh, communication and respect. There are a whole lot more, but you know, those are three key ingredients for your relationship. And you might end up, you know, choosing um, among those. Uh, you might want a spiritual person, you know, somebody who really is on a spiritual path, you know, a godly person. You might really want somebody who has a faith context uh, to some degree. You want somebody who cares. You know, you might want somebody who's compassionate. Uh, uh, you want somebody, again, who has some self-discipline in their life. I mean, you know, let's just face it again. You, you cannot be with someone who is uh, an uh, addict uh, or an alcoholic. I mean, they don't have any discipline in their life, and the relationship is not going to make it. You know, in the end, uh, they have to find some discipline within their life with those behaviors because, again, it destroys relationships. We know that, again. Uh, you must have some discipline with your, your temper. You know, anger, it, you know, we all get angry, and it's all right to get angry. But my gosh, uh, if you can't control your anger, and you're around screaming and hollering and throwing things, and don't tell me you're going to hit somebody. Oh, you know, it gets to that point of an uh, exploitative relationship. And there are so many different types of relationships. And we're going to talk about some of those. But when you get to people who want to get violent, you know, you're getting into exploitation. That is not a love relationship. I'm sorry. And, and you can say over all day long, they love me, they love me, they love me. They said they love me, they love me. And then they hit you and they knock you out and you got to go to the doctor and you come back with one black eye and then you say, but they love me. They didn't mean it. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. That's exploitative. That's not love. And so we got to understand again that our ideas of what love is may be something else. We might just be desperate. We might just be needed. We might just uh, have a need for some security in our life. Or the person may be financially are prosperous and uh, we just need to be financially uh, taken care of. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we have somebody in our life and we say we love them, you know, because we're codependent. Uh, we just need to have somebody to take care of, uh, you know, to look after. You know, we don't really like ourselves. We don't really accept ourselves. And so uh, we put all of our energy into this other person. You know, I could go on and on this tape, but I, I don't want to say everything today about love. But I just do want to say again, you got to have a recipe for love. And you need to figure out what needs to go into your love relationship. And it needs to be qualities, positive qualities. Remember again, love relationships are always positive, you know, in the sense of what should be in the relationship. Uh, it's not to say that people don't disagree, uh, it, you know, along the way, but uh, in terms of uh, negativity in the line of violent kind of behavior, abusive kind of, uh, of behavior in any way, that's not a love relationship. Love relationship doesn't have abuse and violence attached to those kinds of uh, exploitative kinds of traits that you find in many. Uh, relationships that women have today. So again, I want you to know who you are. I want you to know who you belong to. I want you to know who you are and who you belong to. Then you will love yourself, first of all, because you have experienced the love of a greater power, the creator who loved you enough uh, to bring you into this world and we see and know the love that God has for us. And if we have that love from the creator and knowing that, then we can love ourselves. And then by loving ourselves, we can love others. 
and we're going to be doing that in a healthy kind of way. And we can't do that in a healthy kind of way unless we know what it means to have a healthy love relationship. And so women, we don't want to be desperate out here. And that's what's happening. A lot of women have been desperate, just grabbing hold of anything and everything. You know, they're, they're pulling people to them and saying, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, be with me, be with me, be with me. And it's not a healthy relationship. You just need somebody so bad. You, you just want somebody so bad. Uh, love yourself first. And, you know, love yourself and let the creator love you and feel that hole inside that is within you of craving for love. And if you could find some love for yourself, you certainly would fill that up somewhat. And if you have the love of God, you even fill it up even more so. And then you can patiently sit back and write out your recipe for a love relationship and be content in waiting on this, doing what you need to do to attract it toward you. You don't have to go out running for it. It'll come to you. It'll find you. Sacred identity. Here it is. Sacred identity. This love thing means, again, if you're so sacred, then uh, you love yourself. You love others. And you'll find the love that's needed in your life. A book, again, for every woman who has ever wanted to know uh, the answer to that most important question, who am I? It's also for the men in their life who, again, love them, dare to love them. Please go to paypal.me slash sacred identity. And you can get this uh, there by contacting me. Or email me at sacredidentity9 at gmail.com and ask me about it. Or just leave it in my comments, uh, either on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Ah, oh, on my page, Sacred Identity. So good to talk to you today, women. Write out that recipe. Write it out. It's needed. Mm.